I get a text from my manager and he was like, yo, you booked it. And it was such a defining moment because you go from acting and auditioning temporarily on different shows and like coming in as like the visitor to like stepping in and having your own show. Hey GQ, I'm Noah Centineo and these are some of my biggest moments. I actually didn't realize that To All The Boys was gonna be a big deal until it came out. It wasn't until I like woke up one morning and my manager texted me and was like, yo, check your Instagram. And I started to see like millions of people uh, following me that I went, oh wow, I guess, I guess it did well. It changed the way that I go out in public. It changed the way that I get to meet people. It's been incredible. Hey, Covey. Anything for your friend? He's not with me. I'd like a chocolate shake. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. The scene that stands out to me from the first film um, is the is when Peter Kavinsky meets Lara Jean at the diner for the first time. Because that was the first scene that we actually ever shot for the entire franchise ever together, me and Lana. Everything that was decided from that day forward, that's how I played the character for the next three years. The Korean grocery store is all the way across town. Yeah, I know. So if I went all the way across town to get you something that you like, then that means... You must really like yogurt? You are awesome. I was in the hot tub for like 12 hours that day. They were like, you can get out if you want. I went, no, I think I'd like to stay here, actually. And it was crazy because it, it looks like we're outside at night. We're actually under this crazy tent that production had built. So it was the middle of the day and like everything was blacked out because of the tent that surrounded. And then Lana and I like made out and it was great. <laughs> it was what it was and I guess a lot of people liked it. Shannon and I got very close while filming Sierra Burgess. She's such a like a pensive and like careful and like loving nurturing person. We spent as you can imagine, a lot of time together and just got to connect. And I think that's one of my favorite things about acting in general is just you meet people and you get to connect with them. It was really special, really special. And Ian Samuels, the director, created such a, a, a world. You know, we were using lenses that were from like the 70s and 80s. And he really did a beautiful job of just really making that world for us to kind of step into. This is my brother, Ty, and he's deaf too. <laughs> what are the odds of that? It's crazy. Uh, I'm gonna make him uh, the first four foot quarterback. What are the odds? I didn't learn fluent sign language, definitely not. But um, I'd never acted with someone who was deaf before. And so being able to experience that and to interact with my younger brother, it was like a very warm moment, an endearing moment, but then it was also like super fun for Shannon and I because we definitely had no idea what we were doing. And your... Your name is... Shit Pizza? It was so much fun filming that scene. It was the coolest thing, because Ross Butler and I had actually, we've been friends since before we shot that film, and so being able to actually work with someone that I was close with on a personal level and just added a whole nother layer. And then Jordan Fisher and I actually, we knew each other, I've known him since I was 15. We've been like walking into audition rooms and callback rooms and seeing each other. Just special, man. All the different people that came together on two and three. Reuniting with Lana, it was like going back to summer camp. You know, we had such a, a kick-ass time doing the first one. We got to see each other for the second one, but what was wild was like we had both gone through a transition because before, no one really knew who we were. Afterwards, more people knew who we were. After a year being able to kind of reconnect and, and process that experience with each other was, I think, very helpful and healthy. And then it was also amazing to be able to work with her again. You can't think about us breaking up on our first date. I just don't want us to break each other's hearts. I promise I am not going to break your heart. The lantern scene sets up the whole promise that is the through line of the second movie. It's like, I promise I'm not gonna break your heart. Which is like, why would you promise that to someone? You can't promise that to someone. In fact, sometimes love is in breaking each other's hearts and learning how to like mend that. Then that's when a bond really solidifies. 
at times, not always. And it's a beautiful moment too. We were in this huge park in Vancouver and like we really did set all of these lanterns into the sky. And one person's kind of burned down. It was, it was funny. <laughs> it was like, ah! I don't know if I can say that, whatever. And then uh, at the restaurant, when I take Lana to the, the restaurant after that, we did a full one shot. We did a whole like shot for shot of Goodfellas. Didn't make it. Didn't make it into the movie. Wish it did. There's definitely a little bit of like um, magic, right? You had to add a little bit of flair. What we did was when we were walking away from the treehouse, we at some point step onto this platform and then there were people hiding away in the corners of the platform. And as soon as we step on and face each other, they like hook us with these safety lines. And then the platform goes up and the camera and everyone's on it. And we just all raise like 20 feet into the sky. We rehearsed it like, oh, like six or seven times the day before for like an hour, talked through it, got on set, did it. I love stuff like that. Like I, I wanna do more stunts. I think stunts are super fun. Lana was so great. She was like, yeah. <laughs> the first few times she was all nervous. And... I had only recurred on one show before then. I went to the callback, then they told me that they wanted me to test for it. I'd, I don't think I'd, I'd never tested for anything before. I go in, I do my thing, they ask me to leave, so I leave. I had one of those, uh, those little scooters that you stand on, not the Segways, but one of those like Hawkeye. It was like, Right when those started coming out, I had my backpack and I started from Burbank. I went all the way to Camarillo, North Hollywood by the Jersey Mike's and it died right around there. And I was like, ah, oh, what am I going to do? And then I like looked at my phone and my phone was dead too. And I was like, and then, but I remembered my homie lived right around the corner. So I just showed up to his place. He wasn't there. So I sat out of out his house and I waited like 30 minutes. Then he just showed up. I was like, what's up, man? So I go in, I plug my phone in, I plug in my weird scooter thing. I get a text from my manager and he was like, yo, you booked it. And it was such a defining moment because you go from acting and auditioning temporarily on different shows and like coming in as like the visitor to like stepping in and having your own show where you're a foundational element of the entire project. It created a lot of stability for me. It created so much confidence for me. The Fosters, like, I consider that my collegiate education when it comes to acting. Peter Page, Bradley Bredewig, Joanna Johnson, um, you know, all the writers, the cast, it was a family. The executive team had such a vision and had such a, a purpose for the show. It really permeates to the people that watch it, to the fans. It's one thing when people come up to me and say, oh my God, I loved you as Peter Kavinsky. Oh my God, I loved you as Jamie. But it's different when someone comes up to me and says, I'm a huge fan of the Fosters. It changed my life. I just had to say hi. Those people almost immediately, like I would sit down and just like have coffee with them um, because I understand the impact that that show has had. Could be more grateful to have been selected. I just got a call one day and said, hey, you're the choice for this music video you want to do? And I said, absolutely. Are you kidding me? They had like a pool of people that they were looking at and, and I was the one that, that got lucky enough to be chosen. And very fun. I, I, I had done a music video, but I'd never done like a music video. Very cute. Camille is incredible. What a vibrant, loving, like energetic, positive, like person. It was very like quick. Like I think they had locked a lot of the choreo beforehand. When I got there, we would work with the choreographers and figure it out really quick. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Good, good. Okay, great. Awesome. Great. We're going to go do this scene and we'll come back and then we'll, we'll do this one. I was like, all right, cool. My favorite moment of the video is when we're outside and I, I picked Mila up, put her on the car and she like slaps me. And I remember just being like, yo, just slap me. Like, just, just go for it. And she did. And it, it works. You know, it was like, and it was so funny because I don't want to hurt you. It was like, no, no, go for it. But she, she can hit. It was, it was a solid hit. Very fun. Very fun. I keep saying that, but it was, you know. That was the first studio film I have ever worked on in my entire life. The, the size of the production is just like, <laughs> it's huge. The professionalism between the crew, the cast, EB, everyone involved, and then also the willingness to have fun with each other on and off set, to really play with each other and, and give each other in a scene so much. I'd experienced it with, with other films, but to see it done in such a masterful way was quite a learning experience for me. Did you 
Did you do that? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think he uh, finally got the point. <laughs> Is that a pun? Because you impaled him? I had to keep up. I had to try to keep up as best that I could. And then Ella. Ella Belinska. Like, we had so much fun together, man. She's super fresh with acting as well. And like, so she does her own stunts. Ella Belinska does her own stunts, all of them, everything. It, like, she's in the car, she jumps out of the car, she's shooting the gun, it jams, it wasn't supposed to jam. She fixes it, continues going, like, it looks sick. She taught me, if anything, that like, yo, do your own stunts. Learn how to do your own stunts. So I'm trying, but I will never be as good as Ella Belinska is. Langston, oh my god. <laughs> He's been in there all the time. <laughs> you hit a person in my Louis XIV? Meeting Patrick, that was crazy. I was in there for, I can't tell you, maybe 30 takes. Just chilling, tied up. And then like they open it, I would just fall out. It was very fun. It was very, very fun. That whole scene was hilarious. And, and I think Patrick, just the way that he like commands that moment and kind of throws me away as a character. He's like, oh, ho, ho. It's like really f***ed up what's happening, but you know, he killed it. Um, obviously he killed it. Your team's like, hey man, listen, this is a film that's coming out. Like we're, we're, talk we're in talks for it. We don't know what's gonna happen, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, all right, cool. Like that would be insane working with Dwayne Johnson and Jama and, but I, I always try to manage my expectations and be like, yeah, no, like I would love to, but like the odds of it happening are zero. Like why would we? And then you get this follow-up call and it's like, no, you got it. I mean, it's just an example of how my life has changed. I grew up acting when I was eight, auditioning, driving like an hour to auditions every single weekend. Then when I came out to LA when I was 15, I was auditioning daily throughout the week, you know, just driving to auditions all the time, all the time. and like hoping to get a call back. And then you get a call back and then you never book. You know, you do that for years. It's challenging work and it's good work and you have to be dedicated and consistent. Just to get like that one liner, suddenly you get offers for studio superhero films with Dwayne Johnson. You know, it's like ridiculous. Favor Nations, technically, we started working on it two years ago. It was an idea that started in my head as like a philanthropic apparel company, and then it's grown into something much larger and much more multifaceted than just that. The genesis of it was I was 17 years old, and like I've always wanted to design hoodies or, or t-shirts or items, and then sell them and have the money that was raised from that go to charity to support a cause. I promised myself that if I ever was successful and got a platform from acting, then I would use that to not just fuel my own interests, but like to help other people. I'd been acting on self-interest only for years and I was not happy. Like I, I was actually like very anxious and I had crazy mood swings and I didn't know why I didn't feel fulfilled. And it was just because I was acting selfishly. And so when Tall the Boys blew, I was like, yo, this is it. This is my opportunity to actually do something that I want that, to actually do something to help people. It's a philanthropic lifestyle brand. Instead of us raising a bunch of money and giving it to a nonprofit that would use that money for overhead, we're gonna find smaller, more targeted and direct nonprofits that will actually take that money and put it towards use and good use for the cause that you care about. There's a lot of different parts to it, but, but that's why I created Favored Nations. So Artie's a friend of mine. Um, his manager, Kyle McCarthy, is one of my best friends on this planet. And we've all known each other for years. When they did Save Me Tonight, they were like, we were talking about it, and I was like, yeah, man, I would love to direct one of your songs. I don't know if that's a thing. He goes, that's crazy. I was literally gonna ask you if you wanted to direct this one. It was a surreal experience. I'd never directed before, but being able to jump into it with such talented people and that kind of helped lead it and, and, and walk me through the process from start to finish. And to do it with someone I'm so close with, like Artie, um, made it just super relaxing. It wasn't anywhere near as stressful as you would think it would be. I mean, working with Lily, she, she is so good, so talented, and just so present and so there with you. It was a simple music video shoot with friends, and she 
just like poured her heart into it. I love her. She's so great. The theme of it is, you know, friendship, finding good people that can help you overcome challenges because that's really what Artie and, and I's relationship is built off of, is just a friendship. And so we wanted that to play out uh, in the video as well. And we wanted a lot of color. So we did the color explosion, which was fire. So crazy when you're there in person.